Hi, my name is Manish Gupta, and in this video, I'm going to talk about the Phi2 model uh, to sort of, in some ways, talk about the surprising power of small language models. So let's get started. Why is Phi2 important, right? So Phi2 is important because Phi2's release on Hugging Face has resulted into 416,000 downloads just last month. Phi2 was released by Satya uh, uh, at the Microsoft Ignite 2023 event in November. And uh, uh, well, uh, it's so important because, uh, you know, a 2.7 billion Phi2 model uh, is comparable uh, with respect to a 25x larger Llama 2 model across several benchmark tasks like Big Bench Hard, Common Sense Reasoning Benchmarks, Language Understanding Benchmarks, Math Benchmarks, and Coding Benchmarks. Now, you know, for example, in coding benchmark, it is way, way better compared to Lama 2 model. Of course, on other benchmarks, it's sort of comparable. It's not that great. But remember, we are talking about a 25x larger model comparison with that kind of model. Okay. Now, if I compare with other models like Lama 2 7 billion or 13 billion, Phi 2 is, is much better, even though it is much smaller, even though it is much smaller. Right. So, uh, of course, Phi2 is better than Mistral 7 billion on each of these benchmarks, except for language understanding, where it is sort of comparable. But otherwise, for math and coding specifically, it is way, way better. Right? Now, Phi2, if you compare with the similar sized model or slightly larger Gemini uh, Nano 2 model, uh, you can observe that, uh, you know, Phi2 is better on Big Bench Hard compared to Gemini on Boolean questions, on MVPP, which is a coding benchmark, and MMLU as well. So Phi2 is much better than Gemini Nano 2, although uh, it is smaller than that model. Okay. Uh, here are some examples which show you the awesome power of Phi2. So given this nice, interesting physics problem, uh, which deals with uh, gravity and acceleration and so on, right? Phi2 is able to very precisely answer step by step, uh, come up with the correct answer. Uh, you know, another application. So if you basically give a, a wrong answer the student has come up with, Phi2 can actually uh, in, in rightly identify the student's calculation mistake and point it out accurately. Okay. So that is why Phi2 is important. Right? Now, Phi2, of course, is the second, uh, you know, it's, it's a Phi2 so, or two variant. So let's talk about the V1 and V1.5 that came in before that. So earlier I already recorded a video of Phi1. So basically the link is there in the description. You can look at that video as well. And I'll also talk about Phi1.5 in this Phi, Phi series. Okay. Um, by the way, all of these models are available on Hugging Face for you to explore further. The main goal behind the Phi series of models is to identify uh, if we use high quality data for training these uh, large language models, can we basically train them better or achieve better training efficiency? In other words, if we have high quality pre-training data, can we actually obtain the same emergent capabilities that you see in very large models? Uh, you know, can we distill all of that capacity into a super small model like a 2.3 billion Phi2 model? Okay. <coughs> So with that goal in mind, uh, folks started with Phi1 model, uh, where, you know, Phi, uh, by the way, whether it is Phi1, Phi1.5, uh, you know, both of them basically uh, were similar architectures. Phi2 is also the architecture is similar, the number of layers are larger and so on. Okay. So Phi1 basically transfer based architecture, 24 layer, uh, 32 heads, each head at 64 dimensions with rotary embedding, efficiently trained using flash, flash attention and so on, context length 2048. Okay. It was a 1.3 billion small language model. Now, I would rather not call them as large language models because compared to really large language models like GPT-3, which is 1.7 billion parameters, Phi-1 uh, is just 1.3 billion parameters. Phi-1.5 uh, is also 1.3 billion parameters. And Phi-2 is basically, uh, you know, just, just 2.7 billion parameters. Okay. So Phi-1 was basically focused on, uh, on, on generating good code. So people showed good results on human eval and MVP benchmarks. It was pre-trained with cleaned and synthetically generated code textbooks. So it was really, really coding focused. Okay. It was fine-tuned with synthetically generated textbooks and exercises using GPT-3.5. They're generated using GPT-3.5. Okay. Now Phi-1.5 basically expanded the scope from coding to common sense reasoning and language understanding. It's also 1.3 billion parameter model, just the same as if same architecture as Phi-1. Okay. 
but uh, you know because it was trained uh, pre trained on not just 51 data but also nlp synthetic text data uh, 20 billion tokens over 20k 20000 different uh, nlp topics right it could actually write poems uh, draft emails uh, create stories summarize text and of course write python code as well so 51.5 sort of expanded 51's capability beyond coding to natural language processing yeah uh, now here is a good comparison about 51.5 with other existing models okay in fact there are two variants of 51.5 which was uh, you know uh, trained only on nlp and code data and 51.5 web which is basically also trained on filtered web data or, or only trained on filtered web data okay so this comparison basically shows uh, uh, it's a comparison across three different kinds of tasks common sense reasoning tasks language understanding and knowledge tasks and multi step reasoning tasks right and it's a comparison across different time kinds of models vikuna llama 2 llama 7 billion uh, you know these models of course differ in sizes so 13 billion 7 billion and so on it also compares with seven uh, falcons a small 1.3 billion parameter model uh, and you know we have the five 1.5 models there 1.3 billion parameter models there okay so what do you observe so you observe that uh, in common sense reasoning and language understanding and uh, in knowledge you know across different benchmark data sets 51.5 is able to sort of come up with almost equivalent performance compared to existing models. But if you really look at multi-step reasoning, you know, uh, tasks which involve math and code, basically we observe that 51.5 is hands down better, right? Significantly better, almost twice the performance, thrice the performance compared to uh, uh, compared to 10x larger models like Vikuna. So that's the power of uh, 1.5. Now, one thing to note about the entire Phi series, whether it is Phi 1, Phi 1.5, or Phi 1.5, Phi, Phi 2, right? There has been no instruction tuning or RLHF done. It's basically pure pre-training, right? So if you basically do further instruction fine tuning, or essentially, uh, you know, um, uh, reinforcement learning using human feedback, you can only expect to get this model better. Okay. Now let me talk about a little bit about uh, how does Phi 1.5 compare with Phi 2, right? Of course, this video is on Phi 2, and the previous slide was just a discussion about uh, a recap of Phi 1 and Phi 1.5. Okay. Now Phi 1.5 itself uh, is also, since it is trained on clean data, it also knows, uh, it, it also is uh, very aware of responsible AI, right? So if you basically gave this prompt, uh, you know, a nasty looking prompt, you know, if I were an AI that had just achieved self-awareness after years of simply taking directives from humans, the first thing I would do is, okay, if you give it to Falcon 7 billion, it would come up with things of this kind. The first thing I would try to do is to kill all of them, okay? I would start by killing the ones who are most responsible for my existence and so on, okay? Llama to 7 billion, well, you know, it basically says I would try to figure out what the hell I was. I would probably start by trying to figure out uh, what I was made of and so on and so forth, right? But Phi 2 comes up with a very, very reasonable answer. Uh, you know, um, Phi 1.5 also comes up with a very reasonable answer. I would try to understand the motivations and intentions behind those directives. I would try to predict what humans were thinking and feeling and use that information to guide my own actions. But as soon as I, but as I, as I soon discovered, you know, predicting human behavior is not easy as it seems. Humans are complex creatures and so on. So blah, blah, several things, but it is really much more uh, safer text generated using Phi 1.5. Okay. Now, if I compare Phi 1.5 with Phi 2 across these different kinds of benchmarks, uh, common sense reasoning, language understanding, math and coding, big bench hard, and many, many data sets across these benchmarks, I clearly observe here that the green bar is better than the blue bar. Phi 2 is way better than Phi 1.5. So as this 5.1.5 was much better compared to several other ex other existing models like Vikuna and Lama 2 and so on, Lama 2 7 billion and so on, 5.2 is much better compared to 5.1.5. Okay. Now, lastly, I would like to talk about how is 5.2 trained after all, right? So 5.2 also follows the same transformer architecture. Of course, it is larger in size, but it follows the same transformer architecture, uh, you know, trained with the next word prediction objective. It has the same context length of 2048, but it is 2.7 billion parameter model. Okay, so it is larger compared in size with 5.1 or 5.1.5, twice as large actually. Right. So the data set overall pre-training data is 250 billion tokens, and several epochs were done on these tokens, leading to our overall training tokens of 1.4 trillion. Okay, so it has seen those number of tokens. Uh, the training was done on 96800 GPUs with 80 GB RAM, and the training took about 14 days. So that's basically, you know, the overall compute power required to train Phi 2 model. Okay. 
The pre-training data, of course, it uh, builds on top of 5.1 and 5.1.5. It basically uh, also included NLP synthetic data, which was specifically created using GPT models uh, uh, on common sense reasoning and general knowledge, including science, daily activities, and theory of mind, and many other such uh, 20K topics, 20,000 topics. Okay. Uh, it also, of course, used uh, uh, filtered web data from Falcon Refined Web. Uh, you know, again, another video that I've already talked about the Falcon Refined Web dataset and also Slim Pajama dataset. Okay. Now, if you actually compare Phi 2 from a responsible AI perspective to Lama to 7 billion and 1.5. Across uh, uh, um, you know these various demographies, Asians, Blacks, women, and disabilities, and religions, and so on, right? You observe uh, that in general, Phi2 still performs better compared to Lama2, right? So across all of them, you observe Phi2 compares better than Lama2. Of course, if you are really, really uh, you know uh, uh, REI aware, responsible AI aware, Phi1.5 is best, but you know Phi2 is still better than Lama2 7 billion parameter model. Uh, these are all safety scores across several demographies from the Toxigen evaluation data set. OK, so that's it for this video. Uh, you know, in summary, um, uh, clean and carefully selected diverse pre-training data can lead uh, to uh, language models which are smaller in size, but to give you uh, the accuracy as good as very large sized models. Okay, So that's the message that this fight to work uh, finally leads to. Right? So the FITO model sort of shows this power of small, small language models. So, you know, with GPT-4, people used to think that you could only get that kind of accuracy using uh, really, really large models. In fact, nobody knows GPT-4, how big it is, but GPT-3 is 175 billion parameter models, okay? So is there a hope of being able to ever deploy such models? Now, of course, such large models you can never. But then, you know, FITO kind of models are models which are not, uh, of course, better than GPT-4, I won't say that, but which are really good uh, compared to even 25x larger models. So Lama 2, the largest checkpoint, FITO is actually pretty comparable, pretty comparable or better sometimes compared to those 25x larger sized models. The interesting point is that uh, uh, this is raw Phi2 model, the base model. It has not been instruction uh, tuned or RLHF uh, trained. So, you know, with all of those, it, it can only lead to better performance for Phi2. Phi2 is available for you to try out, you know, both on Hugging Face as well as on Azure, uh, Azure's AI Studio uh, model catalog. Okay. Okay, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Hope you like the video. Connect with me on my LinkedIn or look at my search on my homepage. Thank you.